So let's start. The deaf experience. Now, we need to understand what is an experience. And understand why the creation needed to create two creators. And why they, in turn, needed to create other beings. We need to understand that consciousness is eternal. It has everything but one thing, death. So, it is necessary that consciousness experiences death on itself. Consciousness does not understand what it means to begin and to end because it is eternal. So it asks to its two emanations, the two creators, to experience death in its place. The two creators, once they realize that they exist, they also refuse to experience death. Because that would mean ending, and so they delegate their creatures to experience death for them. That implies that the first creator, C1, creates primordial man with a soul, and since primordial man has a soul, he understands that the soul does not have a time axis and that the soul is the secret for immortality. Primordial man refuses to experience his own end too. Hence he decides he doesn't want to give up his soul component. There's only one way to achieve such result, creating other beings. The aliens, whose task is to house primordial man's soul component. The aliens will die and primordial man will recapture his own soul component. After she experiences death, but at somebody else's expense, not primordial man's. Primordial man doesn't die. And the aliens are the means through which he experiences death. But something doesn't work out in this plan. The aliens, that were created by primordial man, rebels against this situation and this kind of treatment. So primordial man makes sure that they lose the soul component because it is too dangerous that they keep it within themselves without wanting to give it back to him, the lawful owner. At the end of the experience. Some aliens, as the Lux, get to be stripped of their bodies to which the soul attaches herself. Others are victims of destruction and wars, and primordial man, who orchestrates all of this from the top, is able to bring back home his own souls, the Tower of Babel myth. In this moment, the souls who had different kind of experiences, understand that going back to primordial man means going back inside a virtual jail, where primordial man himself is the boss. And where it's not possible to die, that means to experience. Death is an experience which is necessary to the soul, who was created for such reason. The soul, when her container doesn't die, cannot detach from it, and so cannot have a new experience. The alien strategy. So, the aliens are now left alone by their creator, primordial man, but they don't give up, they execute a new strategy for survival. They build mankind, that is, us. Not just any man, but a man whose DNA is a trap for the souls, we point out here again that the soul component embodies only certain type of bodies. Whose DNA has a sequence of particular purine and pyrimidine bases, probably coming from the mitochondrial mother's DNA. A DNA that emulates primordial man's DNA. The aliens wastefy the Neanderthal structure, until they create a Cro-Magnon. And they wait until the soul ends up in it. When the soul ends up in these containers, which are meant to capture the soul, then the aliens abduct those men who have a soul. And they use them for all those reasons we already described in our previous works, while hoping to wastefy their own DNA in order to make it biocompatible with mankind's soul component. Once the goal will be achieved, mankind will be destroyed, and the soul component, even if, ob torto calo, will be forced into the alien's containers now biocompatible with her presence. Then, the alien's strategy would be to stop this flow of souls in their bodies and to stop the soul from getting out of them. The final result of this would be an immortal alien just like primordial man. But where can they find the souls to enter in such containers? The aliens well know that primordial man needs his souls to enter in mortal containers, and that he then takes back the souls. After they experience death, the aliens patiently wait and primordial man starts to use the containers that the aliens created. Then the aliens start to kidnap men having a soul component and they try to steal it, and so to steal, sooner or later, the soul component from their own creator, primordial man. There we have the beginning of a new fight for life and immortality between primordial man and his creatures, and such fight involves beings who are totally unaware about any of this, mankind. But truth will out. The second creator. 
In the meantime the second creator decides to follow a different path to evolve. But in so choosing, it lost its soul component, who didn't want to follow along. We do not know at this point how and why this happened. But according to the stories told by the abductees, we can infer that the second creator was in an area of the universe which was dimensionally damaged, and its soul refused to follow it there. The second creator is in a bidimensional universe, at least according to our point of view. This is a universe which is closing itself primordial man. According to the abductees alien active memories. And where there can't be neither colors, nor bodies. So, on one side we have the second creator without a soul and so without a body. And on the other side we have a soul component wandering in this part of the universe without any container to use. But when the soul from the second creator sees the alien's creation, mankind, there she tries to enter in those containers. Which were prepared to host the soul coming from primordial man. A real and unexpected feast for the aliens. It is not clear what the second creator did. But his attempts to come back in our part of the universe failed, because you can come back on this side only if you are soul. Otherwise you are forced to stay on the other side. That side represents, according to the holy scriptures, hell, where the devil and its creatures, the demons, are excluded. And, once again, we are describing something which is archetypically already described in the sacred texts of certain cultures, like, for example, the Hebrew culture. But this is not the only one, as we mentioned above. Even the second creator, which we abbreviated as C2, creates a poorer creation. It creates those bodiless aliens which we many times described. Particularly the ones who are limited by having to use a fake body in order to interact with our world, they use such bodies like puppeteers. A puppet that looks like the white-haired, six-fingered, tall, white-dressed Nordic alien, he wears a medallion on his neck, having a double triangle upside-down symbol. Another alien of this kind is named R.A., to remind the Egyptian gods which are linked to his figure. It uses an alien body which looks like a very tall winged creature, with a beak in the place of the nose, and a long waddle under the chin, and also a hypothetical third eye in the middle of his forehead. Actually, we still don't know what such third eye really is, but that's how the abductees describes it. They remember an anthropomorphic bird, almost 11 foot tall. We called this Horus. Even the second creator used its creatures as laborers just to recapture the soul component that it lost. These bodiless aliens try to stay alive using the abductee soul component, as we described in our previous works. Their goal was to make a body or use somebody else's body in order to pass on this side of the universe. This seems possible only if you are a three-dimensional being. After finding a body the bodiless alien uses the soul component and tries to integrate it within itself. Its final goal is to pass on this side, as we said, and then go back to the consciousness, from where the first creator comes. In the end, its first goal is to save itself. Then it wants to live without physically dying. See later on the next episode.